Mayday family, how are you doing today? For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Mayday. I'm a licensed counselor with the YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and get started. Today I want us to talk about something that's really, really important, something that comes up very often, not only with the clients that I see on a daily basis, but also on different YouTube videos, different media outlets, and things like that. Don't forget to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and also consider subscribing. Traits that I'm mentioning and that I'm talking about when I say women need to start being more masculine <laughs> are more core and fundamental traits, especially and specifically when it comes to how we deal with men especially men that we are going out on dates with, that we are seeing, that we are in relationships with, we need to start operating from a more masculine mindset, right? We need to start operating more from the same mindset from which men operate. And the reason for this is that unless we start doing that, we will time and time again be disappointed with the caliber of men that we are getting as well as the caliber of men that we are creating especially as women i i, I feel like from my perspective the one of the most important things for women to understand is that it's not just you that your imp, that your actions impact your actions don't just impact you, they don't only impact you, they impact all women within the society, right, within the societal construct. So, for example, when you decide to sleep with a man on the first date, those actions aren't just impacting you, they're impacting all women because now you have men that will walk around with the presumption that they can go out on a first date with women and sleep with those women on the first date. And not only can they do that, but they deserve to do that. So you're training men on how to treat other women by the actions that you're choosing for yourself. Does that make sense? And so that's how it works. And that's the first thing that we need to understand is that just because you're making these actions and you feel like, oh, these actions are only affecting me, that's not true. Your actions are affecting everyone else, society as a whole, and they're also affecting your specific group. AKA, for example, if you're a black woman and you decide to sleep with the men that you go out with on the first date, and let's say, for example, you primarily go out with black men and you're sleeping with them on the first date, now you're helping in training a culture of men that are getting used to sleeping with women on the first date and not valuing, uh, you know, spending time with, with women, not valuing women's bodies as they should because, you know, in essence, you're giving it up so easily and so you're making it so easy for them. So that's the first thing to understand. And so when I say that women need to operate from a more masculine mentality, this is where it starts. It starts with understanding the concept that any actions that you take do not only affect you, but they affect the group as a whole and they affect society as a whole, which then comes right back around and affects you in a way that you don't even know. Because when you decide, okay, I want to be serious now, this is the type of guy that I want, X, Y, Z, now you're having a hard time finding that. And that's because of what you've helped to create, right? So, that, so that's the first step, is understanding that basic level systematic process and how that works. Once we understand that, then we can start to see that, okay, if that's the case, then how, how do I need to move forward in order to make sure that I'm getting what I want and that women as a whole start winning this game? Because let me tell you something, ladies, especially for women, I do feel like a lot of times we're not winning. And the reason is because we're not playing to win. So essentially, the 
core lesson here is that we need to understand that when we deal with men, every man that we deal with and we interact with, we are training that man on a mass level. We are training men as a collective, right? We're not training them just on an individual level because everything is cumulative. So we need to spend time understanding this concept. And if, if that's still a confusing concept to you, leave a comment below. I can make a separate video diving more in depth into that. Don't forget to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and also consider subscribing. But essentially what it comes down to is that your actions affect the cumulative group and whatever you're doing as far as affecting the cumulative group will then come right back around to affect you and most of the times if those actions aren't conducive to the growth and the well-being of the cumulative group then you will then also be affected ne negatively on the back end. There's no way of avoiding it. And if enough people do this in the masses, that's when we start seeing uh, the results. For example, a shortage of uh, marriages and families staying together within the African community, within the African American community, uh, or, you know, uh, African American men who seem to feel like it's okay to just, you know, walk out on families and walk out on kids. So you start seeing those effects in the masses. And so we need to really understand the process behind that and how that that and how that works. And this is a mentality that men typically have. Men typically play the game to win. And that's something that they already have in their minds. They don't come in with the mentality of like, oh, I want her to like me. I want her to like me for the long term. That's not what they're concerned with. As soon as men come into the game, as soon as they ask you on that first day, date, most of the times, guess what they're thinking of? They're thinking of winning. And what does winning look like to them? Typically, for most men, winning is getting in your pants and getting physical with you and having sex with you and if they are able to do that then they've won and they no longer have a reason to stick around from their mentality and this is the mentality that a lot of men operate off of a lot of women are coming in operating from a mentality of like oh i want to be liked well if you're worried and concerned about being liked then you're never going to win because you're always going to be concerned about being liked <laughs> you know what i mean and so that is the difference. Women, if we want to win as a collective group and as a whole, we need to switch that mentality. We need to start operating from a standpoint of, I want to win, and this is a game that I'm playing to win, versus I want to be liked, you know what I mean? And what, is that for, what does that mean? So for example, if you're going on a date with someone, and this is a guy that you might be interested in, maybe based on his profile or a recommendation from a friend or something like that. Don't go, don't go into your first date or into your first conversation with a guy thinking, geez, I really want him to like me, I hope he likes me. No, that's, that's not the end goal because then you're not playing to win, now you're playing to be liked. The goal that most women have is to be married and have kids and have a family. A lot of women have that goal. Not all women, just a lot of women, that's the goal that they have when they're going out on dates with other men. So if that's your goal, then you need to play to win. You need to play to, to obtain that goal. You can't play to be liked. So you need to play with a focus on winning that goal, with a focus on conquering that goal. And when you do that, you won't give up your leverage so easily. You won't go sleep with them on a first date knowing if you know and understand that that is your most valuable asset. That's the leverage that you have over this man is sexual intercourse, right? Because 
initially, initially for most men, that's the first thing that they think of and that is your power, that is your leverage. And what's happening nowadays is that men are lying to you. They're, they're trying to get you to believe that it doesn't matter. Like if I like you, even if we sleep together, it doesn't matter, it's not true, like that's a lie. That is your leverage. It's just like any other business deal. If you know a trading secret, for example, if you're in the stock markets into stocks, and you know that a company is about to boost its, its numbers, and then you go tell everybody else, and you own part of that stock, you're not gonna make as much money, you're not gonna win, right? So you keep that information to yourself, you place in even more trades for that particular stock, so when the the company's numbers actually increase, so does your cash out pay. You know what I mean? So, so we need to go in with that mentality of winning, playing to win, not playing to be liked. And when you're playing to win, you understand what your leverage is. You understand what your value is. You have to understand that. Otherwise, you won't know how to use that to your advantage to win the game. That's what it comes down to. Your leverage as a woman is one of your leverages, one of your biggest leverages. Women actually have a few big leverages and values. It's just that they don't know that these are leverages and these are values, assets to be used as such. But one of the biggest ones, and I use this, I continue to use this as an example because it's the easiest example for most people to understand, is when it comes to sex. You don't have to give that up on the first night. That is your leverage that you're holding over this man. I mean, I can't even explain the expense that men would go to, go through just to end up sleeping with you at the end of the day. So why give that up on the first night, give up your leverage, and then start questioning or asking yourself why he's not paying attention to you? Well, it's because you gave up your leverage. Now you have nothing to play with. You have no more cards in your in your deck you have no more winning cards so now what you know so you can't blame men for that you can only blame yourself and when you do this over and over and over again and if when enough women do this which right now too many women are doing it and we're seeing the results of that and that we don't really have good quality men to pick from at least not a lot of them when more women give up their leverage so easily, the men work less for it, they have to work less for it, they value it less, and they move on to the next thing a lot quicker. The women that are looking for this marriage concept and, and being married and having a family and kids, it's not really what they're, they're wanting. So they're playing against themselves because they're focused on the wrong end goal. They're focused on the wrong um, destination, essentially. So you need to start playing to win as opposed to playing to be liked. Getting Being liked doesn't really get you far. It doesn't get you far enough. You need to play to win, right? Being liked is not an end goal, right? It's not what the focus should be. That leads us into the next thing. We really need to get good at being happy with ourselves. And one of the things that I notice in society as a whole, especially when it comes to women, is that we place a lot of value in romantic relationships and what men think about us. When it's, if you sit down and think about it, why do you care so much about that? Who cares what men think about you? What do you think about yourself? What makes you happy? How can you be happy with yourself without depending on another man to give you that happiness? And once you find that, once you're able to feel happy and satisfied in your own life, then you don't feel pressure to be liked by a man. You don't feel pressure to sleep with someone on a first date. You don't feel pressure to do any of those things. Why? Because you're already happy. You're not seeking validation from this person. You're not wanting this person to like you, right? You don't feel pressure for this person to like you for any reason. You are just you. If the person is down, then the person is down. If the person is not, then they're not. Women need to start understanding their own value and need to start doing homework to find out what it takes for them to be happy without a man, period, right? And that goes with, for men too. Men need to do that to understand what it takes to be happy without someone else, just be happy with themselves. It's rampant within women and within that group is that uh, you, there's so many of them seeking validation from men 
And the reason they do that is, is probably because they don't like themselves. And so we need to spend time getting to know ourselves, getting to like ourselves, doing what we need to do in order to better like ourselves so that we then don't have to depend on someone else to like us so that we then feel good about ourselves. And when we remove that aspect, then you find that it's so much easier to let a guy go if he's not the guy, if he's not the one, just see ya, see ya later. And we haven't lost anything because we haven't slept with him, we haven't, he hasn't really touched us, we haven't let him do anything, so we haven't lost anything. And if enough women do that in the masses, guess what, then we start training men into understanding that, hey, it's not that easy, you're gonna have to step it up, you know what I mean? So that brings us into the next thing, and I think that predominantly we find this, especially within the African American community, uh, but having children without a commitment on the table, out of wedlock, is not the way to go. If you're wanting a family, then you really need to think two, three, four, five times before having a child. And I, I, I see a lot of women will say, well, that was an accident, this and that, but you know, there are you know, such things as, as accidents when it comes to having children. If you have a child, then you have a child. And so what you don't want to do is put yourself at a disadvantage when playing this game because you had a child with someone who is not able to be a father to your child. So it doesn't even come necessarily come down to whether or not you're married to that person. It really just comes down to, at the very least, making sure that the men that you're dealing with are able to take care of themselves. They have a job, they have a, um, they're financially stable, and they have the right mindset, you know? So even if you, you both decide the relationship aspect isn't working, at least you can keep a friendship and a partnership so this man continues to do his job, which is to be in the life of that child. What you don't want is to end up with someone, things go sour, things go left, now you're fighting all the time, he's not in the life of the child, or even worse, uh, you know, you sleep with someone, you end up pregnant with their baby, and then that guy just disappears. He MIAs, never to return. And that that's, that's rampant, especially within the African American community. And you can really do some solid work as far as filtering out the men that don't have core characteristics, that don't have the things that you would want a man to have if you both were to end up with a child together. <laughs> you can really do some solid work in filtering those men out if you at least give it six months to a year before ever sleeping with this guy. And I know that a lot of people say, well, I don't put a time on it, I don't wanna put a time on it. My advice would be put a time on it because it gives you a way of keeping track of it. And I think people say, I don't put a time on it, I don't wanna put a time on it because it is hard, you know, the, the longer it goes, the harder it is to keep track of it, especially if it's someone that you're attracted to and you're really into. But my advice would be to put a time on it so that it's easier for you to keep track of. And not only that, you need to make sure that at the very least you're interacting with this person almost every day for a minimum of at least an hour, whether that's text or a phone call during this time period. So if you're not wanting to wait until marriage, at the very least, give it six to 12 months. And that will filter it out. Don't sleep with someone and then you end up pregnant and now you're saying it was an accident. That's not an accident, you slept with them. It's not an accident. Everyone knows that's how you get pregnant. And so when you, every time you make the decision to sleep with someone, that is a risk that you take, which makes it not an accident. So we need to come to that understanding. And the more we do this, the more we are holding men accountable into bringing more to the table. Like, hey, it's not gonna be that easy. You need to step it up. So the more women that do this, the more men are forced to step it up, right? They are forced to come to the table with more. They, they just won't have a choice. And so women need to start understanding that they are actually the one that hold all the power. They hold all the cards. 
because what men care about and what's most important to men is that sexual element most of them a lot of them is that sexual element that having sex with you element when you withhold that because you understand that that is your leverage they can't win you know so if they go to you they can't get it if they go to the next person they can't get it if they go to the next person they can't get it they're gonna start learning really quickly like okay well maybe i need to tweak some things because they're not going to want to go without they, they can't go without for a very extended period of time it's very different where most females can because that's not what we spend a lot of our time thinking about our biological makeup is just different and i'm just speaking in general terms i know that there are outliers and things like that but just in general terms when it comes to these types of topics. So when we understand that, we're able to even out the playing field a lot more, okay? So that's what I will say about that. There's so much more to be said on that. I made a video on the true meaning of marriage uh, because I think it's important for women to start understanding what that actually means. I think a lot of women don't really understand it. They say it's something that they want, but then they get in it and it's, it becomes a mess, right? So if you haven't watched that video, go ahead and uh, uh, click that video. I will leave the link below so you can watch it. But um, that's also something that comes into play. And I will talk to you guys soon. Don't forget to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And also consider subscribing to the Mayday family. I would love for you to join us. And I'm looking forward to our goals together. Let me know what you think. Leave the comments below. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.